They say an Englishman's home is his castle, but living in a flat, I don't find that at all. Some younger people don't look at you as a, as a person who was once like them. If I go in the car shop, I've got to ask the people to um, get me like birthday cards and that. But some people are too busy to help you. Because of the amount of people that are in the area, um, it's so difficult. They just fight for every single job. I don't know how they can make it better, I really don't. Well, first of all, I was in recovery myself. And then as I progressed through recovery and got myself better, I started to meet and greet people. And then uh, from that, I've, I've done a lot of other courses and stuff. If you know where to get advice from, it's easy. I think if you, if you, if you don't know where to find out about things, then, then you've got absolutely no idea. I've worked in a, a food bank myself and I've had a person come in with, with no shoes or no socks on because he didn't have any. And uh, we, we actually gave him some shoes and socks that we had in the, in the place. So that was how poor he was, the poor fellow. Um, and you see people like that all the time. It's quite regular. Um, it's not nice. There's been a lot of alterations to the road, very new road leading up to the motorway <clears throat> to create a new village which is excellent for the young ones at night. There's wine bars, there's cafes. Everything has changed. The world has become an awful place in some ways. We don't communicate like we used to and are frightened of change. Everybody, everybody talks to everybody. Um, doors were left open, people walked in out of each other's houses all the time. Um, it's not like that anymore now because there's a big influx of Eastern European people coming to the area and it's um, made people a bit more secure and a bit more cautious. You know, it's not it's changed completely that. I remarried, moved to Salford, um, to my new wife's flat, um, which was on the first floor. Um, a, a block of flats with 12 flats. Um, on the floor that we're on, <coughs> There were a number of unusual people, to say the least. One of them, a lady, a very attractive lady, lives opposite us. Um, and she has funny ways, like she wants the fire doors um, left open. It's difficult to get work because there are so many people in this community now. It's massive. It's just it's flooded the community with um, Eastern European people. And it's just... 30 or 40 people at every interview, so it's not easy to get a job anyway. The age is a factor, but the, uh, it's against the law to um, not give me an interview. But you know when you're going in for an interview, they're not going to give you the job, because there's younger people, more experienced people, are going to get the job straight away. I think a lot of my problem as well was isolation, coming out of work and having nothing to do, so I had a lot of ruminating time yeah. on me, so like, my mind kept ticking over, and plus I've had dramas, and, Things like that kept coming back to me. When I first came home, um, I'd gone in um, fully fit and able. I came home in a wheelchair, um, not able to, to walk. Um, it was quite traumatising. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to face anybody. I didn't want to go anywhere that I thought might be difficult. If there were steps, if there was anywhere I couldn't open doors. My mental health is, is not too bad now. I mean, I was, I just suffered with depression anxiety, stress, all those things were at the same time a sort of heart attack. Everything, a uh, lot of family matters and everything were all at the same time, so I wasn't in a very good place. The thing is, the thing is, when the, about my, at my, in my head at the moment, at that moment, when I was really bad, I, I, I didn't want anyone to speak to. Um, I was, I made a big wall to keep myself in and to keep others out. And, and that's what I never, I never tried to. Uh, it was only eventually when I, when I did get a little help that I found that this big wall of a bill I couldn't get out of. I've not used all all the facilities that I've, uh, that are open to me, but the, the ones that I have, um, mainly the ones where the, it's not so much um, clinical. Uh, clinical stuff, it's, it's about just people talking to you yeah. and I, I found uh, that was the best. 
There is services out there. And I personally don't want them to, to be bothered with me. I've never claimed a benefit before in my life, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, and that particular process is really um, dense and the paperwork is massive and I wasn't sure whether or not I was eligible or not eligible and you can never get anyone on the helplines constantly engaged and so it was just a case of I put it off I actually put off filling in the paperwork for nearly 12 months because I just couldn't face it. I had a favourite pub which I, which I used to frequent quite often was called the house at Jack Built. It was more than a place to get a pint of beer it, it was a place where you could meet and socialise with your friends, see if everybody was okay. The first group I attended was Smart Recovery. I was silent, I said nothing, but I listened. I heard others open up about their troubles, their issues, but to be honest, I felt comfortable in the room. This allowed me gradually to open up and to be able to speak about my problems. Many years ago I had a personal family tragedy that made me not want to do anything or leave the house. After a few years, I started going to the local community centre with a close friend. It got me out of the house and really helped me. <clears throat> it made me feel so much better and got to know lots of other people there. Unfortunately, the centre closed and I was devastated what to do next. But <clears throat> I had built up my confidence and started to go to other community spaces doing new activities.